So what does the change in power mean for the DFL agenda at the state capitol, and will it mean possible gridlock? And joining us now is DFL Representative Mike Freiberg of Golden Valley, who easily won his re-election bid on Tuesday. First of all, Representative Freiberg, congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Did you see this shift of power coming at the legislature, and why do you think uh, the DFL wasn't able to pull it out in the House? Um, you know, throughout the campaign, I tended to hear comments about how it was a quieter election, people weren't quite as engaged. I think the fact that only 50% of uh, Minnesotans voted during this election reflects that. Um, you know, I certainly don't see it as any uh, rebuke of our policies. I mean, I think the fact that Governor Dayton won by a substantial margin uh, shows that statewide there is a broad level of support for the things we adopted, like early uh, childhood education, all day kindergarten tuition freeze, and those are certainly the things I was talking about in my campaign. How do you think it happened then? Was it local issues out in the outstate, or uh, what was the, what changed things? Um, possibly local issues. Um, you know, I feel like we had very strong candidates um, in every legislative district in the state, and they worked really hard. You know, in many cases, they actually uh, outperformed Governor Dayton. Um, it wasn't quite by enough to win some of those key races that ended up being determinative in who controls the chamber. Um, but I feel like, uh, you know, there were, there were strong headwinds. I mean, certainly around the country, it wasn't a good day for uh, Democrats in general. Um, and I feel like some of them might have been the victim of that. Looking ahead to the legislative session, what has to give for the two parties to work together and, uh, you know, what DFL priorities might be cast aside? Uh, well, I'm certainly not willing to cast aside anything at this point. Um, you know, I'm still hopeful that we'll be able to work on the issues that I talked about uh, during my campaign, uh, like continuing to focus on early childhood education, addressing, addressing the cost of college and transportation. Um, you know, both parties are going to have to give. You know, I know probably after every election like this where there's a change of power, everybody says that. You know, we're going to have to compromise. Um, I'm hopeful that we can. We saw it from the governor there. I, I feel like the statewide reaction to the government shutdown from 2011 uh, sent a very strong message that Minnesotans won't stand for that. And I think if there is that sort of gridlock, um, it, it'll be felt at the ballot box again two years from now. And I don't think, um, I assume, you know, the Republicans that are going to be in control of the House won't want that to happen. So, you know, I've been able to work with members of the Republican Party uh, throughout my two years um, in the House. Um, so I'm hopeful that they'll be able to continue to work with me and other, and other legislators. And you, what is the best way, personally, that you feel to reach a compromise? Do you think compromise is the way to go forward, I, I would assume? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to compromise. You know, I, I feel like, um, you know, a few years ago, part of the issue was a lot of ca uh, candidates had signed pledges, uh, whether it was about taxes or whatnot. I haven't heard as much about that this year, so I'm hopeful that um, people won't come into it uh, with sort of a set position already, and people will be more willing to work across the aisle. Maybe you have their heels dug in a little less? <laughs> uh, yeah, I certainly hope so. <laughs> All right, Mike, Mike Freiberg, thank you very much. Thanks and again, congratulations yeah. on your victory yesterday. Thank you.